So when we talk about investing in humanity, eventually what we're always talking about is also investing in stories. And here in Saudi Arabia and within the vision of 2030, we're talking about stories of economic development, of social development, and of course of the future of humanity. My name is Faisal Asiri, I'll be moderating this session. And with me, I'll introduce also my panelists, Charlene Dillian-Jones, Executive Director for Film al Ula, Regional Film Agency for the region of Al Ula, who's responsible for the development of the sector in that region. Also with us is Bob Simons, Founder and Chairman of STX Entertainment and one of the most prolific uh, producers of films uh, in the world. Welcome. So, Saudi Arabia is investing heavily in the sector. Uh, we have so many initiatives from the Cultural Development Fund, which is creating film financing programs, from the Film Commission, which is providing a 40% rebate, uh, NEOM, Royal Commission for Al-Ula, which are building infrastructure, developing talent to make sure that Saudi Arabia is really a global hub for film. So welcome both. Thank you for joining us. And let me start with Bob. So Bob, as we said, Saudi Arabia has many ambitious projects. And you filmed all over the world. I know that recently you filmed in Qatar, you filmed in Turkey. What is it that you look for when you're looking for a place to shoot your next film? What, what are the hallmarks of a good destination? Is this on? It is. Um, first off, it's an honor to be here, and thank you. We shoot about 15 movies a year, and we shoot them all over the world. One of the things you do look for uh, at the bottom is a crew base, infrastructure, so you don't actually have to bring the people in. But I would say that one of the most important things is does, you know, can, can, you, can you promise a good experience? When you bring the, the people there, is it going to be a good experience? Because if it's a bad experience, they won't want to come back. And I do think that you guys are in a really uh, excellent situation right now. You've got, a, you've got a sovereign with a vision and the willpower and, and uh, heft to sort of execute on that. He's hired really, really smart people to, to make sure that that gets done. And, um, you know, for us, Sometimes it has to do with um, aspects of the location. I'm shooting a, a, a big movie right now in, uh, just outside of Milan with Michael Mann directing um, Adam Driver, uh, where Adam's playing Ferrari. It's a big $100 million thing that is actually way more expensive than it should be because we needed to be in the place where Ferrari was born mm -hmm. and where Ferrari did all of his work. Um, so on the extreme, we'll go to the location because of the inspiration and the spirit and the look. But otherwise, you know, you weigh that against costs in terms of you go to a place and if you have to bring everybody in there, it can get really expensive very fast. Well, so Charlene, Bob just told us, you know, this is what he looks for. And you're now responsible for developing a brand new filming destination, keeping in mind that we're in a very competitive uh, global environment. So what is the Royal Commission for Al-Ula and Film Al-Ula doing in order to attract filmmakers like Bob? Well, I guess the first thing to do is while I'm talking to have a video on in the background. So if we could pop that up. I think very much echoing what um, Bob said, it isn't just the incentive, it isn't just the location and infrastructures. It's about making filming as cost effective and also as predictable as possible. And making the unfamiliar really familiar, right? So with regards to crews coming on ground, yes, in the short term, we'll have a significant amount of international crew combined with Saudi crew, but it really is our responsibility as part of the Royal Commission to develop a Saudi crew that isn't just able to host incoming productions, but to be active agents in Saudi regional content and also to be active agents in the international film industry. So going to London to film, going to Hollywood to film and being agents internationally. So as you'll see on the screen there, Alula is a spectacular destination, but when you have a spectacular destination where maybe film is relatively new, that has to be mirrored with a spectacular experience and spectacular infrastructure that enables people to take the risk of coming for that first time. And even just in the last couple of years, there's been huge, huge strides moving. 
So two and a half weeks ago, I was contacted by quite a large production entity. They had um, a deadline of wanting to arrive in two weeks. And for anyone who knows about Saudi procurement, where you're looking for incentives, that's a big ask. Mm -hmm. um, but when you have the right ears of people, that's possible. So we ultimately had a crew from a very large known production house who wouldn't even meet with us a year ago. They all flew in, they spent time there. I was in Riyadh for some of that time and I got emails which said, so-and-so is rocking it, so-and-so is crushing it in very LA language. So it is about providing <laughs> that experience. And it's that experience of, do we have someone out who's doing scouting? Do we have someone out who can um, translate or to say, okay, you're filming over here, you should really come and look at that piece over there. Or uniquely last week, I got a WhatsApp which said, you know, the producer had lost their passport in the airport in Riyadh. Nothing to do with us. But a couple of WhatsApps later, we were able to locate it with that connection with government services. So it's really doing that full piece so that then you have the conversation, not hi, we're a Lula, but oh, hi, we want to come back again. So that's really what we're doing Amazing. is creating that experience. Amazing. So uh, as we said, you know, Neom is, is also developing a sector. In the region, we have Jordan, we have Abu Dhabi, a bit further afield, we also have Morocco, all excellent filming destinations. So Bob, what I'd like to ask you is, what's the cherry on top? What can a place like Al Ula do to really excel and really be that place that you really want to visit against any other? So maybe I can answer that slightly from the side, because what I do think is that given, given I mean, who wants to make movies? I mean, why do you make movies and TV shows? You do it because people pay attention to it globally. Soft power, it's pushing your values, it's pushing your metrics of what a successful life should be. And simply physically making them is not very interesting. And I assume that's actually not what is part of the vision. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a small part of the tools driving a vision, but ultimately, yes, there's a lot of people trying to attract production. Um, and the reason I say that's not that interesting is, you know, I used to do a lot in China. I had Tencent, Alibaba, PCCW, Lenovo, all those investors had the number one TV show in China. Um, but what I saw happening over there was 30 different municipalities built um, sound stages, top-notch sound stages, great post-production, and they were all empty because they didn't have the hub of creativity and innovation that actually fed those. And I think what you guys are actually getting at and what will differentiate Alula is stepping beyond the actual production and making it more about how do you, how do you, how do you tell stories for a global audience that have the flavor of your culture and have what's important to you guys that you can then push out to the outside world. So I do think that, um, look, obviously if you want the look of Alula, that's a differentiating factor. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, if, but, but, but I don't think that is ultimately where you're going to want to go. I think it's going to be creating a crew base, a, create, a, a base of creativity. And I think that will be the differentiating factor that, frankly, other people don't have. Yeah. So, so essentially what we're looking for in location, I mean, you said that earlier, you said it again, it's crew base, it's infrastructure, but beyond just crew base and infrastructure, it's really creativity and storytelling and really why we make movies, which is the passion for it's it. It's a sustainable business. Sustainable otherwise business. You, want, you end up like 2454, which is a phenomenal facility, but they get played off by locust-type producers <laughs> who play everybody off against each other until their margins disappear. And you may have a Star Wars or a Mission Impossible come through, but it's a one-off. Mm. And that's ultimately not what you want. You want, the, you want to make the movie, but then you want to have a massive marketing campaign behind the film so that the talent is talking not just about promoting the movie, but saying, hey, I, we shot this thing here. Mm. It wasn't what you expected. It wasn't what you were told. This is a really fabulous, evolving, magnificent place. That's ultimately what you want. Great. So, and I think that brings us to the next point, which is impact. So, Charlene, uh, Al Ula is a place known to, uh, to everyone as a place of history, a place of heritage. So many civilizations there, the Nabataeans, the Lehianites, the Islamic civilizations that rose there. 
Um, it's a site of uh, tourism. You have an Ula season, which I think is going on right now. Um, so, but the question that I want to ask you is, why are you investing in the, in, in the film sector? What is the impact that you're trying to achieve from that? Yeah, and I'd say very much echoing what's been said, the pure focus is not production, yeah. right? The pure focus also is not financial return on investment. It's financial return on investment, it's social impact, it's cultural impact and innovation, the opportunity to tell stories, the opportunity to influence. Um, you have an incredibly young population here. You also have a population that's incredibly digitally engaged, that's into gaming, that's into music, that's into content. And actually, when we talk about film, we're now really talking about the screen sector and the convergence of all of that. So the focus very much is how do we host people like yourselves and do that in a way which makes commercial and practical sense for you. But also, how do we do that in a way where the investment that comes with hosting stays in those local communities and reverberates out at a national level? So when we're talking about skill development, not just skill development at the lower end of below the line, but how do we five, 10 years from now have notable heads, heads, of, heads of department? How do we ensure that we are a place where we are involved in hosting, but we're also a place that potentially is at the forefront of post-production as well. Mm. And all of that is about taking a long-term approach. You know, the film sector for many is, is, very, is very glamorous. Mm. Um, and if we were to be very much focused on the, I guess, the media stories and what you might refer to as the bling, five, 10 years from now, we have nothing to show for that. So it really is about developing policy, developing a strategy, but also developing a way of doing things that fits with the compliance that comes with government funds, the responsibility that comes in with developing policy, but also the realities of what filmmakers need, what content providers need in terms of getting things done quickly. Mm -hmm. So in short, social impact, cultural impact, and also return on investment as well. So uh, you, you said some great, some great words there, like importance of local community, like importance of long-term sustainability. But I also want to go back to something that you said earlier, Bob, which is producers are like locusts, right? So d do producers have a responsibility to the local communities that they're filming in? Or is it really the government side and people like the Royal Commission and Film Al-Ula who are there to protect the local communities? How, how do you see that? Well, look, the, the honest answer is yes, producers are, are locusts. I mean, we move around trying to find the best deals. Um, you know, as you say, I, I shot a, a Jason Statham uh, movie in Doha. Um, we were going to shoot it in the south of France, but just got an incredible good deal there, so moved over there. Mm. Um, that's not a good business. Mm. That's not, uh, from my standpoint, it's great. Mm. But from, from the, from the um, locations standpoint, that's not, that's not a sustainable business. Mm. And that's why I jump immediately beyond that to, to producers' responsibility mm. is to make their investors money. Mm. It, film is a, is a public trust mm. because when we're, on one hand, we're pushing emotion. That's just what we do, we sell emotion. You pay me money and I'll change the way you feel. I'll make you laugh, I'll make you cry, I'll, I'll scare you. But in that emotional transaction, there is a public trust. Mm. But that public trust, because you are talking about how, you're talking about values, um, not, not at the top of that list is, is the actual making of the film and the location that's involved in, in, in supporting that. So I think that the weight is on the location to create, a, 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 to create an industry that works. Now, the, 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 the happy answer, the happy talk, would be, yes, of course, you have a responsibility. <laughs> but that just doesn't, isn't practical, which is why I do believe you will very quickly get to a point where you guys will, and again, it's, I, I'm not available, so this isn't self-serving, but you will, you, will, you will find a globally, you, you will find a company that has a pipeline of product that is globally relevant, that it will put through your system in order to drive your, your other goals and they will be bound to you, and that will keep them honest in their responsibility to make the relationship work. 
So basically what you're saying is look more for long-term clients rather than people who are, will you know, come in one and done and then move on to the next. Yes. And I'd just add to that and say, if we use the Locust example, you know. I, I know that's going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have the opportunity to create an attraction, which means that if you are filming with us, there's some ways in which you are stuck and you, whether you want to or not, end up investing in some way in those communities. So I'd say there's a responsibility for us to design our incentives and how we provide our support, that there is also a, um, a recognition of the importance to the local community, because I would imagine in my end of year reviews, it might be a bit what have the producers, directors said about you. There's going to be a big bit of what economic impacts. Mm. How have you supported our strategy that's there as well? So we need to design things that, that it really works. Yeah. So I, I, I think what I'm hearing is it's, it's really a, a relationship where obviously it's a partnership. But in the end, we have to always be aware of both of our responsibilities, whether from the government side or from the producer side of, of knowing, you know, this is what we're after, making sure that that balances out with the, the benefit to local community and local culture. Um, Bob, I want to come back to you with something you said earlier regarding the, the Ferrari film that you're shooting, which, by the way, I expect an invitation to the premiere, hopefully. You're welcome to. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, you said that shooting on location where the story happened is important. But let me ask you a different question, which is, do locations where you should inspire future films, do filmmakers, producers, directors, go to a, fil go to a location for a film and you know, become inspired to do something else, to do something new? Oh, I think absolutely. I think that um, you know, the creative process is about inspiration. And you can get that inspiration from the culture that you're in, from the location that you're at. But it's also, you get that inspiration from the people that you're working with. And that's why I keep coming back to where I think you're going to go is creating a hub of creativity because people feed on each other and they challenge each other and they drive each other to come up with new and better ideas instead of falling back on sort of hacky, predictable, mm -hmm. oh, I'm just going to go. Look, anybody can make a movie or a TV show. Everybody in this room can go and make a movie or a TV show. I don't know if it's going to be any good. I don't know if it's going to be seen by anybody. Um, so the goal is, how do you make sure that it's both good and seen by a lot of people? And that takes, that, 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 that's a big collaborative effort. And, um, and what drives that is, is the inspiration. And again, yes, uh, location and the being together in that location is, is a big part of it. Wait, I, and I think that you know, kind of sums up a lot of what, what you've said. And the beauty of where we are here in Saudi Arabia is we have so many stories that are untold. Um, uh, Al-Ula, for example, has a long history, as we've said, 2,000 years of history, the, the, the Nabataeans, the Lehianites. Uh, I don't know, Charlene, do you have any uh, films that you're working on, any stories around the Nabataeans, the, the Lehianites, well, things a, like that? A couple of bits. So the first thing is that, yes, the location is spectacular, but also with regards to investing in the film more generally, we are building studios and studios are being built everywhere. So that in itself is not a unique thing to be doing. So with regards to how we're approaching the building the studios, we're also looking at, well, what would be the lived experience of crews coming to those studios? How do we ensure that we create placemaking and community and that when they're not occupied commercially, they're being used to really generate um, Saudi or, or regional um, creativity as well. But back to your question, yes, um, Alula does have sort of 200,000 years plus of human history, but I wanted to share with you a sort of modern human story of something that happened about a month ago. So it was the end of the working day, but with the Royal Commission, there's no proper end of the working day. The working day continues. Um, so we were having a change of scene, um, and the person I'm talking about is in the audience. So they suggested that we work outside at the top of a mountain somewhere. And I thought, great, I'd been in the office for more or less three days, and my, window, my office has no windows. So that sounded great to me. So we're driving up, and I can feel my heartbeat increasing slightly because it's getting steeper and steeper, and we're going around, and there isn't anywhere to move across when other cars come down. So I said to the young lady, young sort of 
mid, late 20s, are you not frightened? And she took her face away from the road and looked at me, so I was more frightened. And she said, I'm not frightened of anything. I never get frightened, right? And the reason why I tell that story rather than an ancient story is because I think one of the biggest stories that need to be told from a Saudi film industry perspective is just how multidimensional, how creative, how interesting, how intelligent, not just this generation is, but the generations to come as well. So with regards to Saudi storytelling, I think film has and will always be an amazing format for that. I also spent some time earlier on this week with Manga, who do a lot of work in Saudi around um, anime and also now gaming. Mm. And it was amazing to spend time with that really diverse team. And what I found really interesting is just like the young lady I was in the car with, she had gone to the US and done a film and theater qualification before the industry had mm. even opened up here. And when it did open up, she was ready to go, not just with the skill set and with the right attitude, and also with the manga team that I met, we were talking about the ancient stories, mm. myths and legends mm. from Alula, and how does that transfer into anime? And even really interestingly, how does that transfer into gaming and VR as well? Amazing. And when I was speaking to the creatives there, again, you had young women and young men who had been drawing and creating stories for five, 10 years and were poised and ready. So I think on top of the ancient history that's there, you have the history in the making of, of now as well. So thank you so much for that answer. And thank you both, first of all, for, for your time today. I, I think what, what I've heard here is really that the film sector is a story of two stories. It's a story of economy and industry and crew base and infrastructure and all that, which you need and you have to have, but it's not why we do it. Right? We do it for the stories, we do it for this passion that I'm hearing from you both about the stories of Enzo Ferrari or the stories of young women who decided to get into creative industries even before it was a viable option in Saudi Arabia. Thank you again both for your time. Thank you. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you.